What is going on everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel and in this video I'm going to be going through my round two AFL tips and predictions. Now obviously uh, I'm not in my usual setup um, so apologies for the you know poorer quality. Um, I'm in Sydney if you watch the blog and I really if I want to get the tips video out and I had to film it here in my hotel room. So before we get into our predictions I'm going to be reviewing my tips and predictions for last week quickly. So um, first game Richmond v Carlton I had the Tigers winning by 19. They won by 25 so I got that one pretty close. I tipped the Bulldogs win by 11 over the Dogs. They won by 16, so another pretty close one. The next game, I tipped the Dees win by 9. They won by 22. First one I got wrong, Adelaide v Geelong. I tipped, well, I think everyone tipped Geelong to win. I tipped them to win by 44, but the Crows, in the, probably the upset of the year, won by 12 points. Then the next game, Hawthorne v the Bombers. I tipped the Hawks to get up by 16 points, and they came back from 40 points against the Bombers at halftime to get the job done. So I ended up getting that tip right. But uh, next game, Brisbane v Sydney. I tipped, I think everyone as well tipped the Lions to get the job done. The Swans comprehensively beat the Lions by five goals. So obviously I was wrong with that one. Uh, I got the power tip right. Um, I tipped them by 56. They won by 52 against the Roos. Uh, I got the Saints tip pretty spot on. I tipped them by seven. They won by eight. And then the Eagles, I tipped them by 35. They won by 25. So overall, um, I ended up getting seven out of nine, which I will definitely take. Um, and I'll also quickly go over my big calls to see which ones I got right and which ones I got incorrect. So for the first game, my big call was the Blues to be goalless at quarter time. Got that one wrong. They got three goals. Then the next one, I had Josh Bruce to kick four goals. Um, and he only kicked one. He actually looked pretty good early, but just sort of faded. Next one, I was really close. Melbourne v Frio. I had the... I tipped the crowd to be under 20,000, but unfortunately it was something like 21,500. And for the Geelong game, uh, this one was just a shocking one. Um, I went for Hawkins and Cameron to kick 10 goals between them, uh, but Cameron wasn't even playing and Hawkins only got the two. Um, the next one I was pretty close. I had Kaziski to have a stinker and have three touches or less. Uh, he only had seven, so I was sort of close to that one, but obviously didn't get that one right. Uh, I had the, I tipped the Lions to get us another season ending injury uh, that didn't happen and then for the Port North game I had Boak and Wines to have 65 touches between them and they were close but only had 57 and then the one that I think I should have got correct was the Saints v Giants one I, I said that the margin won't exceed 15 points at any stage and the highest lead was 16 points so I couldn't have been any closer with that one unfortunately and then the last game, West Coast v Gold Coast. Matt Rao, I predicted him to have a good game, um, but he was injured, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, un unfortunately, didn't get that one right. So zero out of nine for the big calls. If you're new for the, to the channel for the tipping, um, yeah, with every tipping video, I'm gonna go through a big call. And if I get less than three of them correct, uh, you guys down below comment a punishment and whichever one has the most likes, I will do. But for this week, I'm not gonna be doing the punishment since it's a bit hard to do it in my hotel room. And most of you guys, sort of wanted me to do punishments that involved not watching my team play or, or things that I wouldn't actually do for a tipping video. So try and comment punishment that I'd actually do and that would be pretty easy to do like in a video that would be pretty quick like jumping in the pool or, or cracking an egg or something along the lines of that. Alrighty, well enough of that. Let's get into the round two predictions and the first game, Carlton versus Collingwood at the MCG. Uh, Thursday night footy. This is going to be a cracker of a match. This is probably the most I've looked forward to a Carlton v Collingwood game. Both teams lost on the weekend and I've got to have to say the Blues definitely looked a lot better. Um, Pies were pretty lackluster. The, the, the Dogs dominated them in all, pretty much all assets of the game um, and we're only luck, pretty lucky to only lose by 16 points. Whilst the Blues, impressive for three and a half quarters. They only let the last few minutes slip. Um, but I'm going to have to go the Blues in this one. The, the, the Pies are the favourites here, but I feel like the Blues can finally, finally get that win against the Pies that they haven't got in a while. And my big call, Harry Mackay has a big game and kicks five or more goals. Uh, he was already against the Tigers. He just had a lot of opportunities and, and coughed it up a lot of the time. He should have kicked four or five, really, when you think about it. Next game, Geelong versus Brisbane, GMHBA Stadium. Another big game because both these sides are coming off a loss, which probably everyone would have thought they'd both get a win. Um, obviously, the Cats losing to the Crows and the Lions losing to the Swans. So this is a massive game because uh, recent form suggests that if a side goes zero and two, that it's almost impossible for them to uh, to make the finals. Only five teams have done it in the last um, yeah last 10 years, I think, something like that. And I don't think any teams have won the premiership after 
finishing 0-2, uh, not, not that I can remember. So this one's a massive game for both of these sides, which I would have to say are both premiership contenders. Um, but since it is at GMHBA Stadium and Geelong looks slightly better than the Lions, although both teams are poor, at least they sort of provided a contest against the Crows and actually came back whilst the Lions, they, they, they ended up getting smashed. So since it is at GMHBA and you, the, the Cats play better there, they're in front of their home fans, um, I've got to go. I've got to go for the Cats in this one. Um, I'll go the Cats by 17 points with my big call being uh, Geelong come back from behind and win at three quarter time. So I do, I do believe the Lions will challenge, but something about the comebacks that happened in round one, I reckon another one will happen and the Cats get the job done. Now next game, 145 at the SCG, Sydney Swans v the Adelaide Crows. Funnily enough, these two teams versus the other two teams that I just mentioned, and they both got upset wins. They're going to be really happy, that these two teams. Uh, no one... No one thought they were going to get the job done, but both of them are sitting pretty pretty um, with one win on the table. So this one, I reckon, is going to be a very close game, although the Swans had that advantage since they um, are playing in their home ground at the SCG. So just, just purely on home ground advantage, I'm going to tip the Swans with this one, but in a very close one. Swans by three, big call. Both teams will score over 100 points. It hasn't happened since 2019. Um, it rarely happens anymore in footy, um, but you know, with the, the new rule changes, the man of the mark rule, we saw some fairly high scoring games over round one. So I reckon this habit has a big chance of happening. Next game, we've got Port Adelaide taking on the Bombers 4.35 p.m. at Adelaide Oval. And uh, I said it was a no brainer that the Cats would beat the Crows last week. I sort of ate my own words there, but I just think, I just think it's another no brainer here. And I do not see the Bombers taking on the power. I know up last week was an upset, but Power were very dominant against the Roos. It was expected that they get the job done, but they did it pretty convincingly. Ali Olia, those and the amount of times he took an intercept mark in that game, like he, he he was a star. So yeah, Power should get the job done. Whilst the Bombers, they were very good for one half, then they weren't so good for the second half. Yeah, the Bombers, they coughed up eight goals in the quarter to a side like the Hawks, who have well, they have a pretty weak forward line. I do see the Power easily getting the job done by 50. 50 points, and my big call is for the power, the power to be in front uh, the entirety of the match because sometimes with these games, you know, the Bombers might get an early tail on and get a couple goals early, but I just feel like the power will be dominant from the first bounce and will win by 50 points. Next game, we've got the Saints taking on the Demons, 725 at Marvel Stadium. First game, the Saints are playing in Marvel with fans in, in for, well, what seems to be an eternity. Um, the Saints came off a very, very gutsy eight-point win against the Giants last week. I was there. I vlogged it. It was amazing. We played really good footy with an undermanned team. I mean, a lot of people thought, you know, we wouldn't get the job done and the Giants would uh, be too strong, but wasn't the case. Whilst the Ds were also quite impressive against the Dockers, although the Dockers, they were very poor, especially in the first quarter. Their skills, their, you know, efficiency inside goals, their goal king was just appalling. I mean, the Dockers would be very disappointed with that performance, but, but the Ds, they did what they had to do, get the job done. Um, so it's, it, it should be a pretty good game, but you'd think the Saints will get up in this one. They, they've got a better list in my opinion. So I'm going to tip the Saints in this one by 21 points. And my big call, Loney, Butler and Higgins combined for 10 plus goals. They were very, very good in the game against the Giants and under the roof in dry conditions. Yeah, they should be licking their lips, I reckon. Now next game, another Saturday night contest, 8.10 p.m. at Metricon Stadium. Uh, the game that, have, well, not too many people are going to be looking forward to. And both teams probably would be disappointed with uh, their round ones, especially the Suns. They took it up to the Eagles for three quarters. Uh, they almost look like snatching it. Matt Rowe, though, unfortunately, went down with a knee injury and, you know, they, the, the Eagles were just, you know, obviously too strong at the end. Whilst the Roos were good for patches against the power, they, they challenged them in the first quarter, but that second quarter, that, that blew the game right open and the power didn't look, didn't look back since. Um, so both teams would like a win to, to kickstart their season, although I think the Suns are uh, definitely the better side in this one, if, especially at their home base. They shouldn't let this one slip, so I'll have the Suns get the job done by 28 points. Um, my big call will be that Gold Coast in any quarter will kick seven, go seven or more goals. Now, first Sunday clash, we've got Hawthorne taking on the Tigers, 110 at the MCG. Uh, both teams coming off a win and should be pretty happy with how they went. The Hawks, obviously, coming back from 40 points down at halftime and uh, snatching a memorable victory, whilst the Tigers, 
uh, you know, were challenged uh, against the Blues, but eventually broke stride and, uh, yeah, got, got some late goals to get the job done. So, you know, Richmond, they don't tend to start off amazingly. And last time these two teams played Hawks were just... They just were very impressive. Um, but I feel like the Tigers, it's just too hard to tip against them. It'll be a close game, I reckon. I'm going to go the Tigers by 10. Uh, but the game breaker, Dustin Martin, my big call, he'll kick four goals or four or more goals and have 25 or more possessions and have another man of the match performance. Next game, 320 at Marble Stadium. Uh, Western Bulldogs taking on the West Coast Eagles. This one should be arguably game of the round. It should be a cracker. Both teams coming off. Pretty good wins. Uh, the Dogs convincingly beating the Pies, um, whilst the, the Eagles, you know, were challenged against the Suns, but, you know, ended up getting the job done. Can the Eagles play at Marvel Stadium? That, that's, a, that's a question. They haven't played there since 2019, and I don't recall them um, doing too great. So I'm going to tip the Dogs in this one by five points um, at Marvel Stadium. They should just get the edge, just like last year. They'll, they'll win a close one, and my big call... Just like last week, four or more dogs will get 30 or more possessions again. Uh, they were on top of the pies last week in the midfield, the dogs. Um, you know, countless players got over 30 of the peel. I think Bond, Smith was a really good. Hunter, McRae, Liberatore. And the last game, um, another game at Optus Stadium. Fremantle taking on at GWS, 6.10 p.m. Um, this one should also be a pretty good game. Both sides coming off pretty disappointing losses, although I reckon the Dockers loss uh, was a little bit more disappointing uh, in terms of the way they play. The Giants, I was there, they actually look pretty good. You know, considering this is at Optus, and Frio play a good brand of footy there, they should be back in front of their home fans. Uh, they should, you know, fix their game style, fix a few things that didn't work last week. I think they should bounce back strong um, and win in a close one by seven points, I reckon. Uh, I reckon the Giants will also be, you know, obviously wanting a win to get back into finals contention, but I think the Dockers at home will just get the job done. And my big call will be that 25 or more behinds will be scored by either of the two sides. So a pretty inaccurate one. Don't really know why. I just think that both sides um, on their bad days can be quite inaccurate. Uh, so there you go, guys. There, those were my round two tips and predictions for the AFL. As I said before, if I get less than three of these bold predictions incorrect, then I'll actually do a punishment. But as, you, as I mentioned previously, do punishments that are appropriate and don't involve me skipping St Kilda games. Like, I'm not going to miss a St Kilda game just because I got predictions wrong. Like, it's not like not worth it, obviously. So, yeah, put the prediction down below. Most liked comment, will I will do that's appropriate. And also, if that are also something that I mentioned in my other video, if I get any tip by the exact margin, it's called a golden tip. And for me, for this tipping thing, I'll give it five points. One other thing I'd like to mention is that uh, I have a footy tipping comp, ESPN tipping. Um, go and, uh, if you haven't joined already, you could go uh, join it, link in description. It's, uh, I think it's public now, so you don't need a password. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously, so you don't need a password. Um, so yeah, join that if you haven't already. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll be back in Melbourne soon. Obviously, as you can see, I am in a hotel room. <laughs>